imagine that you have a 1 by 1 block. Now add it on top of a 2 by 2 block, then a 3 by 3 block, and continue on with this pattern. Let's say that you stack a pile of n blocks following the pattern just described, so that the block on the bottom of the stack is an n by n block. Can you tell me what the total volume of the stack will be? In other words, how many unit blocks will be in this stack? Your first thought might be something like this. 1 cubed, plus 2 cubed, plus 3 cubed, and so on, until you get up to n cubed. And this is a totally valid way of answering this question, and you'd end up with the right answer. But imagine if n is really big, like 1 million. I don't know about you, but the last thing I want to do is add a million numbers on my calculator. Or even if I were to write a program to do this for me, things would start to get slow using this method once n got into the millions. So I'm going to show you another way to solve this problem, and I'll arrive at that solution and prove its validity geometrically, which I think helps provide some intuition as to why it ought to be true. And the method I'm about to show is not only more optimal in terms of time that it takes to compute, but I think it's just a really beautiful piece of math. So let's get into it. Let's start with 1 cubed, which I'm representing here by a literal 1 by 1 cube. Now I'm going to move it over to the left, which from now on will represent the sum so far. On the left, I'm drawing squares instead of cubes, which you can imagine as viewing the cubes from the top down. The important thing is that the cubes on the right and the squares on the left each represent one unit. There's not much to say yet, so let's add the 2x2 two two cube to the total sum. The game plan is to take the unit cubes from the cube number on the right and arrange it with the cumulative sum so far, so that it forms a perfect square. This perfect square will be visualized on the left side of the screen. Now, a reasonable question to ask is, how do you know we will always be able to arrange the partial sum as a perfect square? And this is a good question that will be answered soon. But for now, let's just try it and hope it works. I'll start by removing the bottom layer of the 2x2 two two cube on the right and placing it diagonally to our previous perfect square. Remember, the 1x1 one one square we started with on the left is the first perfect square. Now it's pretty apparent that we can move the remaining four cubes over to the left side to make another perfect square. Now that we've gotten a feel for how we're going to construct the subsequent perfect square, let's try to generalize this to show that by following this method we will always be able to construct another perfect square by adding the next cube number. Once again, the left view represents the sum so far, which we know is a perfect square and the right view represents the nth cube that we're adding. We always start by adding only one layer of the cube to our sum. Notice that every layer of n cubed is composed of exactly n squared unit cubes. This means that there are n cubed minus n squared remaining unit cubes on the right that we somehow need to fit into the square on the left. We've done it for n equals 1 and n equals 2. But now we must find a way to prove we can make a perfect square for any positive integer n. I notice that there are two rectangles missing from the square. One side length is simply n, since that's the side length of the square we've just added. The other side length is the sum of the side lengths of all the previous cubes we've added. In other words, it's the triangle number of n minus 1. We can be sure of this, since we always construct the next perfect square by placing one layer of the cube diagonally, ensuring that each side length of the square increases by the side length of the cube. Hmm, referring to the n minus 1th triangle number like this as a summation, while accurate, isn't very helpful for this situation. Let's see if we can find a formula to replace it. This schematic demonstrates adding up the numbers from 1 to n to calculate the nth triangle number. Nothing too special. But, if we double that triangle we made and rotate it, by doubling the triangle we've made a rectangle with area n times n plus 1. Since the original triangle is half that, it must have area n times n plus 1 over 2. And just like that, we've derived the formula for the nth triangle number. And now, where we had previously written a summation for the n minus 1th triangle number, 
we can replace it with the formula we just found, replacing n with n minus 1. Multiply this by n, and we get n cubed minus n squared over 2. And since there are two of them, this simplifies to just n cubed minus n squared. This is exactly the number of unit cubes on the right. This means we know we can make a perfect square for any value of n. And what's more, we know the side length of the perfect square is the nth triangle number, thanks to our method of constructing the perfect square starting with one layer of the cube. This shows that the square root of the sum of the first n cubes is in fact equivalent to the nth triangle number. Then to answer our original question, the total area of a stack of the first n cubes will be the nth triangle number squared, which comes out to be n to the fourth plus 2n cubed plus n squared over 4. Now to calculate the value for n equals 1 million, we just have to plug in 1 million instead of spending precious time adding up individual cube numbers.